Hey guys, Vesper HBT here. Part three of our video. This is a digital presentation. This is a tutorial of how the parts fit together. All measured drawings will be located only on the TEEP forum. Now let's get to know our parts for our build. What you can see here is just digitally thrown out on a table here, just for just for fun. But uh, what you can see is all the parts approximately uh, size and scale to a regular desk. This is the back section of all of our parts, just to show the back. And here's the front section of all of our parts, just to show kind of the front sections there. I'm going to get a little closer up here, show you our drawer slides. Again, everything's been put back into a computer digitally. This is our stepper motor and our anti-backlash um, fittings here, as well as our drive nuts. This is our coupling that you can see here. It has six actual all-thread pieces that go inside. Those tighten down on the 12 millimeter shaft, that's our drive shaft, and it goes into our 6.35 millimeter shaft, and that's what attaches to our stepper motor. So you can see how those fit together. By having three on each side, that makes sure that our shafts are centered. I recommend that you do get the ones that do have the three bolts if you order your own. Next is our housing or our motor mount that will actually mount our router in place. Of course, this is our cut head. We're going to be setting this up for a porter cable, uh, so that's what I'm going to be designing it for. There will be one at the top and one at the bottom to hold the motor in place correctly. It is a two-part system, so you have the lateral saddle part that attaches to our upright, and you'll see how that is later on in the video here. Then it has the top piece, which is kind of the clamshell part of it. That tightens down around the motor to hold it in place, and it also keeps it from vibrating as well. Just because of how it goes together and the bolts, everything is double secured on that to our back section, which you'll see that in a little bit while further in the video. Our next section here is our bolts. These are our standard size bolts. These are used for attaching the stepper motor to the uh, bracing. It also attaches the uh, anti-backlash fittings to the actual back support and that actually enables us so that we can have our uh, axis move. So that's going to move on our drive shaft, which you'll see in a second as well. In this section here, you'll see our large bolts. These are only used in one location, and that's to attach our clamshells to our back support. That wraps around our cutting motor, which again is a porter cable. Here you can see the attaching nuts. These are all the same size for all of our bolts. Helps keeps our costs down and uh, make sure that everything's gonna fit together correctly. Less tools to buy, less drill bits, that type of thing. These here are our main screws. These are the shortest screws that we use. They're only long enough to go through the actual drawer slide themselves and into our three quarter inch material that we're using to build our CNC out of. You don't want them to go all the way through, just barely come to it. The longer the screw is, the better contact, the more thread you have inside the wood, the longer and better it's going to attach, less chance of strip out. These are our longest screws. These are only used for combining our three quarter inch materials together. So all of our wooden pieces come together with these screws. Of course, they're all the same length because we're dealing with all the same thickness of material in our CNC, again, to save on cost and to make it easier to assemble. This next piece is probably our most important piece. This is what actually enables our drive system to move up and down. Here's a blow up shot of what it looks like. Now on our drive shaft, it is a half inch drive shaft rod, but what is most important is the actual dimension between the tips of our teeth. The reason why this is important is the software that we are designing for this is regulated according to a two millimeter offset. So what that means is from the sharp point of one tooth to the sharp point tip of the other tooth, is two millimeters in dimension. I'll show that when we're putting it together in real life, but for now, just envision that on this drawing here. We'll cover that again, like I said. All right, now for some fun. Now for the fit up. 
So this is our z-axis. It is fully assembled here in this shot. You're seeing it from the right angle right now. You can see all of the parts and pieces in place and where our actual drive motor is, where our drive shaft is, and also where the router is going to go, which is our cut head. This is from our left side here, as you can see. Just another angle, just so you can kind of get a feel for what we're ultimately going to be building here. So we're going to get this started here. This right here is one of the angle braces, as you can see. How it attaches to one of the uprights. It is screwed through in one position. All of these are going to be put in place with glue and screws. That is going to make sure that through the vibration and long-term use of the equipment here, that it's going to stay true and accurate. These braces are important for making sure that the straight edges and straight circumferences are always going to be true. There's a lot of forces that's going to be applied to this particular section. That's why an attention to detail has been taken to make sure that everything is braced up correctly. Here you can see our rails coming together here. These are actually going to get stripped away so I can show you how we're going to screw them to the upright. Zooming into the photos here, you can see where the screws actually go through and attach into our wooden upright. You can see how they go through the rails here and attach completely through the pre-drilled holes that we're going to put into our uprights. This ensures that everything is true, accurate, and straight when we put the part back together completely and assemble it for its last time. These are our main uprights coming back together, showing all the screws here in the alignments and putting the slides back together. The next step is going to be our motor support, which is what actually travels up and down, which makes the Z-axis, of course. And see how it gets screwed together here? I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here, show you how those screws go into this particular section. So from this section, you can see another angle here of how everything bolts together and all the screws that are in place to keep this together accurate and true. Here you can see our anti-backlash device. This is what actually contains our drive shaft and our drive nuts. In between the two nuts that's not shown here is an actual spring that pushes or resists both nuts away from each other. This makes sure that we have tension on our nuts, but not too much as that they will bind. This creates an anti-backlash. Then we're going to attach this to our back upright. Bolts will be inserted through our anti-backlash device as blown up here. These bolts will actually attach that directly to our upright or our Z block that goes up and down. These are held in place on the back wooden pieces shown here with locking nuts. The nuts can either be fluted nuts like these or you can use a nut and washer or a nut washer and lock washer is preferred. So from this you can see our finished assembly. I'm going to strip away the back panel so that you can see how the actual hardware attaches more directly. So you can see all the individual hardware. And then this shot here just shows it as it comes back together. It is important to make sure that you understand how the hardware, as shown here, comes together to completely encase our unit here. Failure to put all of the hardware in the correct locations, as shown here, will cause it to bow, bind, or vibrate. This will all throw your eventual cut pieces out of uh, spec. So the tighter that you can make the tolerances here, the tighter tolerances you're going to have on your finished part. Here in our next section, as you can see here, we're going to be inserting our screws that will hold the bottom half of our clamshell together. Remember, this is what is holding our router in place. This is our cut head. So this needs to be firmly in place. So what I've done is I've inserted screws in the back to hold the bottom plate in place into a specific area. Then we use our bolts to go through to secure the whole thing. So it's basically double secured. One is a point pulling and one is a point pushing. So that way it enables it to adhere and to be connected more correctly. So here you can see where the bolts are being inserted from the face side. 
and a cutaway to show how the bolts go through the entire part. Remember we have our brackets on the top and bottom as shown here. You can see where the bolts come through on the back of the unit. All of these bolts are attached with nuts. The same type of nut that we use to attach our anti-backlash device. In this shot I've removed the back panel so that you can see how the parts attach together. And here you can see where it's reinserted and back into position so that you can see our next step. Our next step is to attach the back to our actual uprights. Here you can see a top-down shot. The thing I want to show you in this top-down shot is the actual groove that's been cut out to enable our anti-backlash to move up and down correctly. Now this does need to be of some tight tolerances because we want to maintain enough material on our backer so that it's strong enough, but still remove enough material so that our z-axis uh, will go up and down correctly. In the next set of shots here, you will see how the actual screws attach our backplate to all of our upright and stability stabilized angle brackets. So they'll be screwed together in a specific pattern. This pattern of screwing it together is to ensure that it is straight, true, and accurate. Remember, any variations here between how our slides move up and down will ultimately end up as a result in our finished part. In other words, tolerance variations that we may or may not want in our part that we finish. So the more detail that we have here, the better our ending parts are going to end up. With the backing removed, you can see where all of the screws place into the uprights and the stability angle brackets. This is important to take note of. Because of where they're all attached, it ensures that everything is straight, plumb, and at right angles. Right angles are important when you're dealing with a z-axis. In this next set of shots here, we'll be showing how our actual mounting brackets are attached. Here you can see where our angle brackets attach. They're screwed through the back as you can see here. One screw here and one screw here. With our backing removed, you can see how the screws are placed into those blocks. Our next set is for our actual stepper bracket. Our bracket goes on as shown here, screwed through in one place here, one place here first. Now this is screwed down as you can see with this cutaway. Then our back bolts or screws are put in place to make sure that it is straight. Here you can see the cutaway of that. This right here, this section shows how we put our collar on here and that attaches to our drive bolt and it attaches to our stepper motor as shown here. Now with our stepper motor in place you can now see how turning the drive shaft will enable our z-axis to move up and down and here again is our finished shot of our completed z-axis. I hope that this step-by-step -step has shown all of the intricate details of how we're going to assemble this in greater detail than I may be able to show you once assembly starts. In the next set of images that you're going to see is the sections of all of our pieces coming together just in kind of a digitized way. I'm not going to narrate through this. I think you've had enough of my voice for now. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the video, and uh, thanks again for watching. We'll have some more videos to come.